networks. Um, why do your networks actually have been around for a number of years? It's nothing new. But what these companies have been doing now is um, optimizing it for uh, the Internet of Things. Um, um, and we say that they all fairly operate in similar uh, frequencies and under similar concepts. However, they differ in the type of um, modulation they use and in the way they operate. And even LTEM and narrowband IoT, um, the, the specification was primarily um, um, written to address the need for the Internet of Things and additional objects becoming online. Because um, using the traditional GSM modem would have been very inefficient in terms of battery power and uh, also the amount of bandwidth it would use wouldn't justify um, using the traditional GSM modems. Um, um, so Sigfox and LoRa both operate in the unlicensed spectrum in the ISM band and uh, they all operate in, in the UK and around Europe it's 868 megahertz. Um, and Genu operates in the 2.4 gig, uh, the 2.5, sorry, 2.4 gigs. Um, um, there's the pros and cons. Um, having a lower frequency, you get a better range. Um, um, the Genu technical spec and the uh, the physical layer um, is very good. However, it is very power hungry um, compared, for example, to Sigfox and LoRa. Um, um, Sigfox operates on a very ultra narrow band of frequency when it transmits a signal. LoRa operates much more on a spread spectrum. Um, narrow band IoT would be very, fairly similar to Sigfox in terms of it's uh, utilizing a very narrow band of frequency once it transmits. Um, so you get a very good range similar to Sigfox. Um, and also operating in a very narrow band of frequency, the noise floor of the interference that might happen from other users, uh, the receiver will be able to detect it better, hence you want why you get better sensitivity. Uh, the other technologies um, utilize uh, processing gain and additional coding um, to limit the um, possible effects of interference. However, the trade-off is how much power you're going to use on this on the device and how much your battery will last. Um, uh, pretty much all of the technologies operate um, um, both uplink and downlink two-way communications. Um, uh, the Sigfox one is device triggered, and there's a limitation on the number of downlink messages you can send on the device compared to other technologies but then it makes better use of the battery power because of that. So, in theory, you can have a device which can operate for close to 10 years or more if you can be pretty efficient in the terms of how it uses battery. Um, LTE and the narrowband IoT, because they use license spectrum, they're not prone too much to interference because um, the frequency blocks they operate in will be specifically assigned to those operators. So they don't need to worry about um, other users in the band. Whereas Sigfox, LoRa, N-Wave and GenU all have to have something in place to make sure that uh, they limit the effects of interference. And all have their own methods of doing it. And um, I'm going to be a bit biased towards Sigfox because Archive has deployed the Sigfox network and I've seen it working and I've seen the way they do the um, um, diversity for message success rate and it is fairly good even in noisy environments and in very built up areas in cities um, um, where you get very good success rates of messages. LoRa is also um, fairly robust because it adds additional coding inside the message itself. The downside to that, though, is that you lose some range. Um, so all of these technologies have their merits. It depends on probably what you need to use your device for, um, how much data you need to send. Um, are you going to be limited with operating within the ISM band? Would you go for LTEM? Um, I believe, in personally, in most cases, some devices will only transmit a few times a day. And um, 
operating within the ISM band, which is, it is license free, but it is regulated. You cannot transmit as much as you want. There is a limit on how much you can transmit every hour. Um, it's still sufficient for most devices, because in some cases it could be just um, you're going to notify um, an application if something goes wrong. Um, and sometimes something will not go wrong for a number of days. So it would be uh, very sufficient to work with, more than acceptable to work within those limitations. Um, if you could go back to the next slide, please. Do you want me to go forward or back? Um, um, so, so all of these technologies deploy some forms, some levels of security. Some of them are fairly different from each other. Um, um, so Sigfox has um, an identification key built in during the manufacturing process and the transceiver, which makes it unique on the network. Um, if another device tries to replay the message or transmit using the same ID, uh, the backend system will realize that there's something wrong going on, basically, and it will block those devices. Um, it's encrypted messages, um, so it's fairly difficult to reuse or replay the same messages. And similarly, also, Laura and Ingenue um, use similar methods also, have similar methods in place, um, apart also including the AES encryption. Um, um, for once it re reaches the, over after going through the RF side, um, on the IP side, um, again, all of them offer some level of security, um, uh, VPN tunnels to transmit the data from the base station network over to the backend servers. Um, uh, so the more you add encryption and processing to it, of course, the trade off is that you have to have more processing power on the device itself. So again, similarly, it is a trade-off, um, how you can best achieve level of required security um, um, versus the, the cost of the developing a device and also battery consumption. Additionally, I mean, I can talk about Sigfox, the way it operates is uh, the, it offers diversity in its message transmission. So, um, uh, you can have a source of interference close to, for example, one base station. Um, but the way the network is designed is that a device can talk, has to talk to more than one base station. So the level of interference occurring or someone spoofing in on the network in a different location is very limited to be able to do that network wide. So that in itself also offers a level of um, um, encryption or yeah, interference resilience. Um, probably the, one of the downsides within Sigfox is that the amount of mass, uh, data you can transmit in one transmission is 12 bytes. It might not sound a lot, but um, um, if you're going to apply some encryption within the application level of the hardware itself, uh, then you're going to use up some of that uh, payload, which is usually reserved for your own application. Um, LoRa and the other technologies um, support much higher uh, rates of transmission, Sigfox is 12 bytes, which might not sound a lot, as I said, but um, sometimes you're only sending state information, you're going to only use a few bits. Um, uh, so it depends on the application you're going to use. 12 bytes might not sound a lot, but you can uh, stuff in quite a lot of information in 12 bytes of data. Um, if you can go on the next slide, please. So, talking again about Sigfox, um, um, it uses a very narrow band, it, it's only 100 hertz when it transmits a signal, um, uh, and because the signal-to-noise ratio is proportional to the bandwidth you're going to use, um, that makes it um, available to work within other users of the spectrum also, and it can, the base station can distinguish between a Sigfox signal and another signal, even if they're transmitting at the same time. Um, um, the resilience, apart from the hardware itself, is also designed in the network, in that whenever a message is transmitted, there is frequency hopping within the band, 
um, and it's also transmitted multiple times. And uh, as I said, each device can talk to multiple base stations. So you build a lot of diversity and robustness in the transmission by doing so. Um, if you just transmit, if you make a device just transmit in that band using that technology just once without that diversity, you get on a good coverage zone, you get probably 60% probability that uh, your device will communicate to the base station by increasing um, um, the frequency rate of the message transmission time and uh, the amount of times it transmits. The, the probability of that go being received uh, by the base station goes up in the high 99.9%. Um, one of the other differences between Sigfox and, for example, LoRa and Ingenue is that Sigfox is a fully managed network. Um, within the UK, Archiv is deploying the network and managing the network, um, uh, and the, the, the plan is to go nationwide. So far, the other technologies have been bespoke to specific areas, um, either within a specific area of a city or in a campus environment, and it's a bit fragmented, so I could, for example, deploy a LoRa network in Salisbury where I live, but someone else in uh, another part of the country will deploy the LoRa network. Um, other users can start using uh, my gateway, but if I decide to switch it off, then there will be an issue for other users. So having um, a fully managed network makes it much better, in my opinion, to be honest. Um, there are plans in other countries at the moment for LoRa to be deployed by either mobile network operators as a managed service also. Um, we haven't seen that uh, in the UK yet. And um, Sigfox is also available, the transceivers are also available by multiple vendors. Um, they made the IP open to anyone who would like to um, implement it on their silicon chips. Um, so there's a wide range of options where you can buy your transceivers from. Um, um, and there's a number of options, for example, a company Telecom Design um, produced their system on chip, including the transceiver. So within one module only, you can have your processor, GPIOs, um, uh, and various other interfaces. So